Brock Purdy was fantastic against the Texas Longhorns this past Saturday, and an offsides penalty allowed Iowa State's Connor Sally to kick a 36-yard field goal for the Cyclones to walk it off 23-21. The Iowa State volleyball team created a three-game win streak, defeating Oklahoma three sets to one. The Iowa State wrestling team began their season on Sunday with a 24-15 victory over Bucknell. Cyclone Insiders starts now. Welcome to Cyclone Insiders. I'm your host, Ben Olson, joined as always with Jared Rivard and John Miller. And you guys, what a fantastic weekend for Iowa State football. One of the most exciting games of my college career. Mm -hmm. The Iowa State Cyclones beat the number 22 Texas Longhorns for the first time in the Matt Campbell era, 23 to 21 on a 36 yard Connor Sally walk off field goal. Uh, Cyclones are now bowl eligible for the third consecutive season, uh, moving to six and four on the, on the season. And uh, this is the first time they've been bowl eligible that long since 2000, 2002, back in the Seneca days, you guys. Um, so really, you can just see the talent is starting to come to Iowa State. Let's just go right off the bat. What, are you, what were your guys' gut reactions? You know, what'd you do when that field goal was going through? What were your thoughts beforehand? What'd you think? Thoughts beforehand, uh, leading up to that drive, I say I've saw I've seen this before too many times as a Cyclone <laughs> fan, uh, but obviously faith in the offense, uh, and then Campbell having faith in uh, in Connor Sally there uh, to make the field goal, and and shout out to Steve Wardle there for for holding up on that snap and John Texas offsides, but but just a, a really great game overall. I was thinking out to that early lead and controlling a lot of the game early on, which is good to see. Uh, let Texas kind of back into it there at the end, but. The defense overall was pretty solid, and when I saw that kick go up, I was just hoping it was going to go in, and <laughs> sure enough, straight down the, the middle there. And, right into and the All-State hands. That's right. The just <laughs> just jubilation afterwards. It was, it was great. Yeah, uh, yeah kind of like Jared talked about, just nerve-wracking because, you know, you kind of talk about it. This is the types of games that Iowa State would always seem to lose in the past, and I think, you know, that field goal going through, as much as it seemed like, oh yeah, we beat Texas, I think we kind of showed nationally that, you know, we're always that team that's going to fight no matter what, you know, what, no matter who we're playing, no matter what the score is and the score we're, we're always going to battle. And I think that's something that, you know, this Iowa State team really has going for it, even though we're six, only six wins, you know, mm -hmm. we, we still got two games left and I think we're going to show that we're an excellent football team. Right, a team that appears to be much better than their record. Exactly. And the storyline all year has been these close games for Iowa State. And this was the first one where, when it came down to crunch time, the execution was there. You mentioned Steve, Steve Wordle drawing Texas offsides mm -hmm. to give Iowa State another field goal. And then just the snap, the hold, and the field goal could not have been more perfect. Yep. Uh, the first time Iowa State has uh, had a field goal as time expired in the game since 1983. October 8th versus Kansas. That's the most Iowa State stat I've ever heard. I, I would believe that it's been that long. Uh, so where do you guys think this victory ranks in the Matt Campbell era? Of course, he finally got Tom Herman in the Texas Longhorns. I'll put it at fourth. Uh, I think first you gotta say the Oklahoma game in 2017 uh, in Norman. Um, and then these two through three, four are pretty close for me. I have two at, at West Virginia last year, yeah. number six, coming in undefeated uh, and kind of ending Greer's Heisman hopes, played a dominant game. Uh, third would be TCU, 2017, coming in number four, the homecoming game, they were undefeated. Um, didn't allow an offensive touchdown, defense was solid, so then I put this Texas game uh, at, at fourth. Um, Matt Campbell finally has a win against every uh, Big 12 opponent. Including and, Iowa State. Including Iowa State yeah. with his time at Toledo. And so it couldn't have happened in a, in a better way for him. Yeah, you talk about those upsets that we had in the past, and I think those, you know, definitely on the national stage say, oh, we beat a top 10 team. But I think we have to analyze a little bit the magnitude of what a loss against Texas would have done for this team. I mean, we lose to Texas and with two games out, 
I don't think we're going to make an Alamo Bowl if, for, you know, now they're talking about Alamo Bowl if we, since we won this game, we've got these two games coming up. We lose that game, it kind of shatters our hope and, you know, it, it makes our team look worse, you know, like, oh, this is the Iowa State team. They just never can get it done in the clutch moments. We've lost so many games at one point. But this win showed that we can and we're capable of doing that. So I think this game definitely showed kind of the the attitude that Matt Campbell brings to Iowa State, and that's something that I think nationally, you know, we kind of have that mentality now, like, oh, Iowa State's this program that's always going to battle, and that's just something that's great. Yeah, I completely agree. Mm -hmm. I think it proves that Iowa State's no longer the pushover in this mm -hmm. league, uh, that the Longhorns were coming to Ames, and Iowa State was actually favored, and they went out and they actually got the job done. Uh, it was really just great to see from Matt Campbell and his staff, because I know that we talked about, it seems like Brian Ferentz and Tom Herman have been kind of two guys <laughs> that you just, Matt Campbell loves to compete against and he really wants to get those guys number. So happy for that staff. Who, uh, I'll do one each, let's go. John, who impressed you on the offensive side of the ball? Um, Deshante Jones, I think, you know, losing Hakeem coming into the season, we kind of expected receiving to be down a little bit, but you kind of look at the numbers he's posted. And I was kind of surprised that he's, could be very well onto a thousand yard season and almost 80 catches. And I, that's very impressive for what I think we expected him coming into the season. And I mean, that one play where he snuck behind his defense <laughs> and pretty rolled out to his opposite hand, or not opposite hand, but opposite side, and threw a bomb to him. That was very mm -hmm. exciting to see, especially to start the second half. So, I mean, that game that he played, and he, I think he had 12, 13 catches this game against Texas. So he was just always balls in his hands every play, and he's just making plays, and that's just. Something that's amazing to see. Jared, who'd you like? Uh, I guess on the defensive end, I got to give it to the whole defensive line. I guess specifically maybe it was Ruke or someone like that. But uh, this defense really shutting down the Texas run game, which hasn't always been there this year, but it's certainly been a factor for them. Um, 50 to 54 total yards of Texas rushing and kind of getting in there on Ellinger sometimes too. Uh, really, really winning the game up front there in the trenches, uh, which I think helped. I'm getting that fourth and one stop in that second quarter. That was a crucial, crucial point in the game. And so I think overall this defense, uh, for the most part of the game, really uh, stopped the Texas offense there and allowed Iowa State to have the success that they did. Yeah, I agree. I like both of uh, the people that you guys named. Um, Deshante Jones, of course, seven receptions, 144 yards and a touchdown. And then Brock Purdy was also fantastic in this one. No errors, which uh, we love to see out of him. He's starting to clean it up just a little. He makes those big plays, but you know, occasionally he'll turn it over. Didn't have any in this game. 30, to, 30 for 48, 354 yards, and two touchdowns for the Cyclones. Um, but this was a game that, despite the score, Iowa State really did kind of dominate every mm -hmm. facet of the game, with the exception of that drive for Texas right before the half, and then that drive that they took the lead on uh, in the fourth quarter. The defense looked terrific, mm -hmm. and uh, the offense, you know, it seemed like they could have had more points than they did, but if you look at the statistics, they were still phenomenal, really, in this game. So nice to see the execution be there in a Big 12 game uh, this late in the season. So a couple of things of note. Charlie Kohler has been named a finalist for the Mackey Award, given to the best tight end in the nation. We're going to talk about him. And, of course, Connor Sally earned the Big 12 Special Teams Player of the Week. So congrats to both of those guys very well deserved. Of course, did you guys hear uh, Connor Sally injured his shoulder <laughs> in the dog pile at the end of the game because Charlie Kohler landed on him? I did, yes, hey, I did. Nobody should be more excited than those <laughs> two guys, though, so it makes sense. Uh, talking about Charlie Kohler, do you guys think he's the best tight end in the Big 12, and would you dare say, should he win this Mackey Award? Um, so I kind of looked at pro football folks or whatever, like their grades, and they said he was second overall in the nation. But he's definitely the best in the Big 12. I mean, it seems like we get in the red zone, Purdy's looking for him no matter if he's got two guys on him, one guy on him. Like, Kohler is the man when it comes down to the red zone. And um, tied for second in the NCAA in touchdowns. Um, yeah, he just – he seems – like one, a red zone threat should be for a tight end. I, I mean, a receiving tight end like he is, he gets it done in the blocking game too. So I don't know if I'd give it to him nationally, but Big 12-wise, he's definitely the best there is. Yeah, I'll second what you said there, John. I think definitely best in the Big 12. Um, and I would put him among the best in the mm -hmm. nation, yep. but I'm not 
I guess I'm a little biased and I could say that he could be the best just because we've seen him so much do so many good things this year uh, with all his ability of, of route running and his hands and then his ability to block as well. And I think he'll definitely, he's a semifinalist. Of the eight semifinalists, he, uh, he's fifth in receptions of those eight and he's fifth in yards, um, second in touchdowns, leading the team in touchdowns. So I think he's definitely going to be in that finalist talk and have a chance to win it. Um, but it also could go uh, to one of those other guys as well. Uh, unfortunately, the, sometimes the finals that are awarded are usually the best teams in the, na uh, the nation based mm -hmm. on record. So, I mean, it might be tougher for him to get that award based on it. But obviously, he's put up statistics that are, you know, some of the best in the country. So. Well, and, and considering the receiving core that he's in oh, yeah, exactly. with, with Deshante and, and Petway and, and all the other guys, and he's still having this successful of a season, mm -hmm. uh, which I think speaks, speaks volumes to what he's been able to do. Yep. Yeah, I like, I like the point that you brought up, John, because it's hard not to have that Iowa State bias. <laughs> uh, he's clearly, hands down, going to have the best season any tight end in Iowa State yep. history. Uh, so, I mean, it looks phenomenal from a distance compared to the nation. Uh, there's a lot of good guys out there, but if he keeps playing like he has been their whole season, he's got at least three more games. Um, I think it's going to be close. I think he's top three in the nation for sure, in mm -hmm. my opinion. Uh, so another great weekend for football. They've got a big game coming up against Kansas, favored by 24 and a half in this one. We'll talk about that a little bit in the Pick'em segment, and we'll tell you our analysis for this game against the Jayhawks with two winnable games left on the schedule for Iowa State this year. Mm -hmm. Jumping into volleyball, though, the Iowa State volleyball team has created a little three-game win streak for themselves. They defeated Oklahoma three sets to one on Friday. A really strong defensive performance, I would say perhaps their best one of the year. They held Oklahoma to a .59 hitting clip in this one. And then the, uh, the senior Avery Rhodes and then uh, Ellie Holthaus, who's been having a great season, uh, won Big 12 Offensive Player of the Week for her 19 kills in this one. So uh, she went off, she was in the zone against Oklahoma. <clears throat> Iowa State's now in third place in the Big 12, you guys. Do you think they can stay in that line? And how confident are you that they're gonna make the NCAA tournament after this nice little stretch of wins? I think it's possible for them to stay in that third place spot, but it's gonna be tough. Um, they're, they're right there with Oklahoma in third. Oklahoma probably has the easier schedule um, remaining here with, with more favorable games for them. Iowa State could definitely, definitely win out uh, with games against Tech in Texas. They dropped that Tech game here in Ames um, that they could have won. Um, and they played Texas very well down there in Austin. Uh, so I think Iowa State definitely wins two. They can maybe squeak that Texas game out. Uh, but it looks like Oklahoma uh, would, would win all three of theirs. Uh, so it's going to be difficult. I'd say they'd probably finish fourth a game behind Oklahoma, but could definitely see them uh, still in third by the end of the year. Yeah, we, we kind of talked about earlier this year how they were going to need one of these games between Oklahoma and Texas Tech, and they completely dominated Oklahoma, mm -hmm. it seemed like, mm -hmm. and Texas Tech has kind of fallen off a little bit. I mean, they have losses to TCU and Kansas, so I think Iowa State, coming off that win, they're just going to keep building, and, you know, I kind of talked about def defense leading to offense, and they showed that in the Oklahoma game, and I think that's very crucial for this team if they're going to be an NCAA tournament team, you know, just having both sides of the ball ha being at their best. And that's that's great for this Iowa State team, and I think they are going to be able to stay in third and squeak their way in an NCAA tournament. Yeah, we're finally starting to see some of that, some of that consistency that we mm -hmm. talked about earlier in the year. Yep. And I think if they win just one more, in my opinion, they are a lock uh, for the NCAA tournament. And with Texas Tech and Kansas left, I could see them maybe uh, claiming that third place spot. And it'd be nice if when Texas comes to town in Hilton, there's not a lot of pressure on them uh, exactly. to have mm -hmm. to win this game. Uh, so looking pretty good for them as far as NCAA tournament play goes. Unfortunately, uh, with some really tough c competition in this region with the Nebraskas and the Wisconsins, uh, they might get a tough draw. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's a young team. I think it'll be a really good learning experience. And I'm excited to see what they can do in the postseason as we reach that point in the fall sports season. That's all the analysis we have right now. When we come back, we're going to do the Cyclone Insiders Pick'em segment. It happens. And we'll also talk a little uh, wrestling and basketball. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Cyclone Insiders. Welcome back to Cyclone Insiders. Uh, before the break, you saw me patting Jared on the shoulder <laughs> here. 
It's because he experienced the highs and the lows yeah. of gambling the past two <laughs> weeks. <laughs> the way you put it with me was you win some, you lose some, and sometimes you lose all of them. <laughs> that is correct. You know, 4 no two weeks ago felt pretty good. Last week, you know, this, this previous week, 0-5, not feeling so good. <laughs> but it, it happens, and you just got to keep rolling. I didn't do much better going 1-4. and four. John, at 2-3 and three for the week, actually somewhat made a comeback. Back in the hunt. <laughs> <laughs> you can see the season standings there. So let's get talking about it. Kansas is coming to Ames like we talked about. Cyclones are 24 and a half point favorites. Since it's Iowa State, Jared, we'll start with you. Can we get a score prediction and uh, who you got covering this one? Oh, I got Kansas with the cover. I just think 24 and a half is too much even though Iowa State's hot right now. Um, as for a score, probably 30 to 17 Cyclones. I'm going to start it with my score prediction, 38-10 Iowa State. And the reasoning behind that is I think that Iowa State's going to come out early and just, you know, they're just going to dominate in all facets of the game. I think Kansas, you know, they've, they've shown signs of being up and they've shown signs of being down. And I think we're going to catch them on the right day and just dominate them all the way. So taking the Cyclones. I don't want to call this a trap game. <laughs> Iowa State should win. There's no reason they should lose this game. But I could see them being a little hungover from the Texas game. So I'm going to pick Kansas to cover the 24.5 point spread. I'm seeing maybe like a 28-17 Iowa State win. Maybe something weird, 25-17. I think, uh, you know, if this will be the first time Matt Campbell faces off against Les Miles. So it might be an interesting game. I just don't think the 24.5 points is reasonable for Iowa State. We'll see. Moving on to the next one, Oklahoma State at West Virginia. The Pokes are favored by seven over the Mountaineers. Jared? This is a tough one, uh, but I'll take Oklahoma State. Uh, Hubbard just continues to run wild over these uh, big, to, big 12 opponents here, and I see no reason that he slows down. Uh, West Virginia's kind of up and down this year, though, so you never know, but uh, give me Oklahoma State. Yeah, West Virginia is coming off a big win against Kansas State mm -hmm. last week, but um, I think Chuba is just, he's, he's too much. I mean, he's a Heisman, going to be probably a Heisman finalist for a reason. I yep. mean, he's just been terrorizing teams. I think Oklahoma State, you know, they are a better football team than West Virginia ultimately, and I think that's going to be shown. Seven touchdown, I mean, that's probably what they're going to win by, seven to 14 points, so. Yeah, I think West Virginia's win last week was a bit of a spoof. Kansas yeah. State wasn't ready to play. So I'm going to go with Oklahoma State to cover the seven-point spread in this one. Jared, Texas at Baylor. Baylor suffered their first loss of the season last week. Texas with a tough loss to us. Who do you got? Uh, I've got Baylor coming you know, at home there against Texas. Like you said, both coming off a tough loss last week. Um, I just think Baylor is going to come out better. Then Texas uh, still trying to stay, Baylor still trying to stay up in uh, first place there for, for the conference championship game. Uh, and then nationally too, fall in one spot in the rankings this week, but they can't, they can't uh, lose another spot there. So I look for them to come out uh, more inspired. I, I want to talk about Baylor. I, nationally, I think their ranking is a little bit high for what they are as a team. I think they're not the football team that most people think they are. I mean, they've had so many close wins, so many. And every time I bet against them. So I'm going to bet against them again and go with Texas. But I just, like, at some point, I just think Baylor, they're going to fall to somebody they're not supposed to fall to. And I think most people thought Oklahoma was going to win that game, mm -hmm. but not in the fashion they did. I mean, Baylor was ahead by so much in the first half, and Oklahoma just dominated in the second half. And I think that's a little bit demoralizing. But... Ultimately, I think just Baylor is just not the team everybody thinks they are. Uh, Baylor is a team that is just the epitome of someone who plays to the level of their competition. It's crazy. <laughs> they played great against Oklahoma last week. I think Oklahoma was the better team. I'm glad yeah. they won. Mm -hmm. But So I think this is going to be a close game. I'm actually going to go with Texas to uh, take the spread because I don't think it'll be within – I think it'll be closer than five and a half points, which Baylor is favored by. So I'm going to go Texas. Kansas State at Texas Tech. Texas Tech, a three-point favorite over the formerly ranked Wildcats. Jared, who you got? I have Texas Tech. This was a little surprising to see it at three, uh, but it is in Lubbock. Kansas State kind of tripped last week against West Virginia, like we mentioned. Uh, Tech is still trying to play for a bowl game appearance as well. Uh, they need to win these last two games. So look for them at home, trying to get bowl eligible. They need this game to come out firing against K-State. 
I they're they're both kind of similar teams in my opinion, so that's why the line's pretty close. But I'm gonna give it to Kansas State. Uh, I mean, it's gonna be a battle, I think, but I see Kansas State taking it. You know, a little frustrated maybe coming off West Virginia's loss, and you know, I just think Texas Tech. It, I don't think they're gonna be ready for them coming in. So. Yeah, I'm gonna take Kansas State here too. It doesn't seem like a team that's gonna lose back to back. Mm -hmm. uh, just to me, I, I think the Wildcats are gonna pull this one out on the road. TCU at Oklahoma. TCU, of course, let us down, losing by two, and they're two and a half yeah. point with the spread. Uh, who do you, are you gonna pick them again, Jim? Uh, yeah, I have TCU again. I <laughs> couldn't help myself. 19 just seems like too much, even though it's in Norman, and then in the uh, in the game here against the. Uh, the Sooners here coming off that good win, that, that comeback uh, in Baylor. Uh, so give me TCU it's on the cover, yeah, not to the, win. The, these huge games are always tough to predict because Oklahoma almost gets these lines every week. But uh, I'm going to take TCU. Um, I think Oklahoma, although with the comeback against Baylor, I see a little bit of another slow start for them. You know, it, it seems like it's almost their motto at this point start slow, finish strong. I mean, that is what you want ultimately, but at the same time, you know, while they're battling to get to a playoff spot, which although it is unlikely, they're still battling for it. And I think, you know, the way they've played in some of these games that they, you know, should be dominating, it seems like they haven't been. So I'm going to take TCU, and I think, you know, Oklahoma's, their, their struggles are going to show again at the beginning of the game. I'm going to go against the analysts here. Give me the Sooners <laughs> by 21. They're going to cover that 19-point spread. Uh, this Sunday, you guys, Iowa State wrestling mm -hmm. uh, faced off in their first meet of the season against the Bucknell Bison. Iowa State pulled out a 24-15 to win thanks to strong performances by Jarrett Deegan, David Carr, who looked fantastic, mm -hmm. you guys. Yeah. Uh, great to see him <laughs> wrestling here. And then uh, Ames very own Marcus Coleman had the only fall of the game with the pin. Uh, so how well do you guys, just real fast, expect this Iowa State wrestling team to be this year? Of course, their next meet is against the Iowa Hawkeyes. It's going to be a top 10 matchup, possibly, uh, between both teams. Iowa will be somewhere in the 1-2-3 range. Iowa State in that 9-10-11-12 range. And uh, you know this is a big one in the state of Iowa, as always. Dresser, you know, is looking for maybe that statement win still at Iowa State. Do you think they'll be able to hang with the Hawkeyes and how are they going to be doing this season? I, I think they're going to have a pretty successful season. Uh, coming off of last year, uh, starting to show signs of success, and now this is uh, Dresser's third season, I believe, and that's normally when he gets it going as a coach. Uh, so I'm looking at, at the Cyclones to have a, a productive year. Uh, this Iowa team is very tough, though. Uh, coming in, I believe, number two this week, and and all but one weight class have someone ranked in the top 10. Uh, but Iowa State has a lot of ranked uh, mm -hmm. uh, wrestlers as well. They got seven, I believe. And, uh, and I like them to keep it close here in this, in this Cyhawk uh, match. But uh, I, think, I think Iowa uh, pulls away with it at the end. Yeah, I think, I think Iowa State, no doubt, is going to be a, very, a much better team than we were last year and at the national contender. But I think Iowa's going to be, I mean, it's going to be a battle, but I think Iowa's going to be too tough in the end. I mean, we have some excellent wrestlers on our team. Carr is looking to be one of the best in the nation at his weight. Deegan has been tough. Um, we got, we're going to have Gomez coming back later. But um, ultimately, I think just th there's a couple matches at certain weights that we're going to lose, and we're going to lose bad, and it's, it's going to be hard to recover from those. So I'm just looking for the Cyclones to become more well-rounded as the season goes on. I mean. We're a great program. We have great wrestlers, but at the same time, when you compare us nationally to teams that have just ranked guys at every weight, and I mean, we have seven, but we're still lacking a few spots. So it's, it's going to be tough to compete with a team like Iowa, who's top five nationally. But, you know, I, I, I would definitely expect us to battle. Yeah, I think this is the most ranked wrestlers that uh, Iowa State has had under mm -hmm. Coach Dresser this season. And of course, Iowa's, Iowa, like you said, has a uh, ranked wrestler in just about every weight. So this should be the best Cyhawk match we've seen in the last mm -hmm. five, ten years easily. I'd like to see Iowa State keep it close. I don't know if they're to the point yet where they're going to beat the Hawkeyes, especially this early in the season. Um, but I think with a strong performance uh, that kind of sends a message to the fans, it could create the, the foundation for a special season for Iowa State wrestling mm -hmm. this year. I like the point you made about David Carr. I think he might be the best wrestler uh, for the Cyclones this mm -hmm. season after watching him on Sunday. 
Uh, one thing I want to talk about is in the heavyweight division, Gannon Gremmel got DQ'd for two unsportsmanlike calls. I don't know if you guys saw this. Essentially, mm -hmm. he wrestled his guy off the mat onto the hardwood twice yeah. and got a DQ call both times, which uh, in, I think is a new rule where you are automatically disqualified. Uh, were you guys okay with that? Do you think <laughs> those were bad calls? It was, it was kind of wild. Yeah. Um, the fans were confused. There was, uh, yeah. Dresser was confused. He didn't say much at his press conference because he still right. wasn't sure what happened. Right. He wanted to go back and look and see exactly what happened. Said he was going to keep his mouth shut until, until he saw that. But yeah, kind of a weird way to end the duel there and, and looking for, for more explanation on that in the upcoming days here. Yeah, that, that was very confusing to see. I mean, I'm not very familiar with wrestling, to be honest, but from a fan's perspective, it's certainly like, I didn't know that could happen in wrestling. Yeah. But, you know, it was one of those matches that it was like he was dominating, and I guess, you know, it kind of reminds you of the blind side when Michael Orr blocked him <laughs> into, like, the over the fence and yeah. excessive blocking. <laughs> kind of reminded me of that, but... Yeah, Gremmel's, Gremmel's an aggressive wrestler, and I think he was just playing his style, but uh, I guess that's something he'll have to be mindful of the rest of the season. And I haven't heard any word, but I do believe he's totally fine to wrestle against Iowa. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, I thought I would have heard some news about it. Mm -hmm. um, in other sports, just some updates for you. Both the men's and women's basketball teams played today. Right before our show started, the men's basketball team defeated Southern Miss 73-45 to in Hilton Coliseum. They had three double-digit scores tonight. As Jared pointed out, it was nice to see. And the women's basketball team played at 11 today against Texas Southern, where they won 79 to 59. Ashley Jones had 30 points and 20 rebounds, and is only the fourth player in Big 12 history to do that. So she has had a phenomenal start to the season. Mm -hmm. uh, this might be our last Cyclone Insiders of this semester. So we will jump into more basketball, wrestling analysis for you when we start up next semester in January. Uh, we'll have a lot to talk about. We'll have to recap the football season, volleyball season. Yep. Anything you guys want to add? You know, it's. I think we've helped the Cyclones succeed to this point. <laughs> you know, we started doing shows, and it seemed like they got over those early woes against you and I. So, you know, hopefully we can help them out coming into basketball when we start up. So. Yeah, say so football, basketball, wrestling, volleyball, it's all coming to a close here. Mm -hmm. Should all be exciting finishes. And it's nice to see Iowa State in a place where all these programs are playing meaningful games uh, together at this point in the season. Yeah, I like what you said. Like, it seems like every program at this point is competing on a national stage, and that mm -hmm. makes these shows more enjoyable. Yeah. And even more from a fan's perspective that, you know, we're just filling up the arena field, whatever we're playing in. And that's just great to see for this program and, you know, this university as a whole, even, I would say. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. It's setting up to be a pretty impressive uh winter season, both with the football postseason and volleyball postseason and then basketball for Iowa State yet again. Props to Jamie Pollard. One thing I forgot to talk about real fast, you guys. Predictions, Iowa State football, bowl game. Top of your head, where do you think they're actually going to end up? I'll say camping World Bowl in Orlando. That'd be a good one. Uh, I, as much as I was talking about the Alamo Bowl earlier, I think that Iowa State is going to end up in like the Horizon Bowl or something like that in Arizona, just a little bit weaker. The Cheez-It Bowl, the one that's in Phoenix. <laughs> they change the names every year, so. What, <laughs> what, I, but, think, I think Camping World is most uh, the most logical one. Right yeah, now. one of those southern Southwestern Bowls mm -hmm. or something like that. I'm seeing maybe, I could unfortunately see uh, them going to Houston. I forget the name of that bowl. But if, if they don't um, end up in Orlando, I think mm -hmm. Alamo Bowl is out of reach. Yeah. Uh, but... I guess we'll find out. Cheer on the Cyclone football team rest of the season. Cheer on the volleyball team. Three games left in their regular season. Can be exciting finishes for both sports. And uh, the Big 12 basketball season will just be getting started next time we see you. Yep. Go out and support, folks. That's all we have on Cyclone Insiders. As always, go Cyclones.